Hello there, welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all the rides and attractions at Universal Studios Hollywood in Los Angeles, California. The studios has a long history spanning over a hundred years, when it was originally opened as Universal City in 1915. Throughout the decades, many movies and TV shows have been filmed at the numerous sound stages and outdoor sets on the property's back lot, and continue to do so to this day. Although there were previous studio tours, it wasn't until 1964 that the modern studio tour began to take shape which provided guests with a sneak peek behind the scenes glimpse at movie and television production at the back lot of Universal Studios. This established a footprint of what is known today as the Universal Studios Hollywood Film Studio and Theme Park. More and more attractions were added to the park, resulting in the Universal Studios we know and love today. Due to its location, Universal Studios Hollywood is broken up into two sections. The upper lot features most of the park's family attractions and shows, with the smaller, lower lot focusing on other popular Universal franchises. At the entrance, once you pass the recognizable Universal Globe and enter the famous Universal Arches, you will be in the park's upper lot. As you walk down Universal Boulevard, you will come to Universal Plaza, a central point within the upper lot which allows you to explore all the different areas. If you walk clockwise, you will find the newest attraction within the park, the secret life of pets off the leash. This only opened in April 2021 and is a dark ride where guests are transformed into lost puppies as you explore the streets of New York. The ride features a fantastic queue line that has some nice interactive elements as well as plenty of amazing audio animatronics of all the popular characters from the Secret Life of Pets films. Opposite the new attraction is Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, a motion simulator ride that transforms you into minions before heading on an adventure through many different scenes. The ride includes some exciting pre-shows and some amazing special effects throughout. You will exit through super silly stuff where you will have a wide selection of Despicable Me merchandise. Carrying on with the Despicable Me theme, you can visit the outdoor play area Super Silly Funland, which is comprised of a wet zone with over 80 different water play features, a dry zone which allows younger guests to climb, jump, slide and explore, a load of different carnival games giving you a chance to win a prize, and an aerial carousel attraction called Silly Swirly Fun Ride. This will soar and spin guests around for a 360 degree view of Super Silly Funland aboard a fleet of uniquely styled ride vehicles. As you head back to Universal Plaza, you can't help but notice the newest area in the park, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Due to the popularity of the Wizarding Worlds over at the Universal Orlando Resort, it was inevitable that it would be added to Universal Studios Hollywood, and it was finally completed in 2016. Hogsmeade features plenty of shopping and dining locations where you can buy a wand in Ollivander's, chug on some butter beer in the Hogshead, or try on some robes in Dervish and Bangs. The possibilities are endless. Housed in Hogwarts Castle is the main attraction, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a motion-based dark ride. The queue line is fantastically themed to the gardens and rooms within Hogwarts, which feels like an attraction within itself. The ride explores many different recognizable scenes from the books and films, and features a plethora of Harry Potter characters and creatures in a mixture of screens, audio animatronics, and special effects. This is a fantastic attraction that always has a long wait, so I would suggest either investing in an express pass or joining the single rider line to bring your wait time down. The other attraction in this area is Flight of the Hippogriff, a junior outdoor roller coaster where Hagrid teaches visitors how to fly a hippogriff. You will see plenty of theming throughout, including Hagrid's hut and the Forbidden Forest, as well as some great views of all the Wizarding World. Throughout the day, you can watch one of the two shows. Frog Choir is an a cappella performance of some Hogwarts students and their frogs as they sing familiar wizarding songs. And the Tri-Wizard Spirit Rally sees the students of Hogwarts, Boobatons, and Durmstrang perform dances to cheer on their classmates. 
Also, there are three different nighttime projection shows that light up the beautiful Hogwarts Castle throughout the year. The nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle is the main show that celebrates the four houses of Hogwarts backed by the legendary John Williams musical score. The dark arts at Hogwarts Castle sees Voldemort, Death Eaters and a host of other cruel legions take over the Wizarding School which begins in the autumn and over Halloween and then in the winter months the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Castle brings ghosts singing Christmas carols, students building snowmen and other wintry offerings. Just like in Orlando and other Universal Resorts, Hogsmeade has been a huge success for good reason and even if you're a casual Harry Potter fan, you can't help but feel the magic in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Next to Hogsmeade is the theme park's signature attraction, the Studio Tour. This is a 45 to 60 minute ride which uses tram vehicles to take visitors from the theme park's upper lot to the back lot where actual filming of many shows and movies take place. The tour will take you through many different recognisable film sets including the Courthouse Square which you will probably recognise from the Back to the Future trilogy, the crash plane scene from War of the Worlds and the Bates Motel from Psycho. Along the way, you'll see how some of the effects are used in the movies with the flash flood and earthquake segments. There are also some other exciting attractions including King Kong 360 3D where you'll be taken through a darkened tunnel and see King Kong take on dinosaurs and other creatures from Skull Island. You'll encounter Jaws in Amity Island and become one of the family in Fast and Furious Supercharged. This is an incredible attraction that is worth the price of admission on its own. Make sure you take a ride on the studio tour when you visit Universal Studios Hollywood. The final area in the upper lot is Springfield, the home of the Simpsons. You can have a beer in Moe's Tavern, grab some food in Krusty Burger and see a host of characters throughout this amazing land. The main attraction is the Simpsons ride, a huge simulator ride that replaced the Back to the Future attraction in 2008. On the ride you'll be introduced to a cartoon theme park called Krusty Land. However, Sideshow Bob is loose from prison and seeks revenge on Krusty and the Simpson family by taking over Krusty Land and destroying the ride. On this 6 minute ride you will recognise plenty of popular Simpsons characters as you try to escape from Sideshow Bob's demolition attempts. The ride utilises the huge IMAX screens and ride cars from the previous attraction. Near the entrance of the ride, Krusty Land Carnival Games gives you the chance to win a Simpsons themed prize at the various midway stations. The upper lot also features four amazing shows for you to enjoy throughout the day. Near the entrance is the amazing show Waterworld. This is a live stunt show featuring a variety of spectacular effects and stunts including pyrotechnics, fire and of course water effects. It has been running since the film's release in 1995 and is a fan favourite, so make sure you catch a showing. In 2018, the Shrek 4D show was replaced by the DreamWorks Theatre, a new state-of-the-art theatre that includes indoor projection mapping as well as a variety of effects. It was designed so that the show could easily be changed in future years and is currently showing Kung Fu Panda The Emperor's Quest. The pre-show includes characters from all the popular DreamWorks films such as Shrek, Madagascar, Trolls and of course Kung Fu Panda. You will then be taken through to the theatre where you will go on an adventure with Poe and friends as they fulfil a quest for the Emperor. Near to Springfield is the stage show Universal's Animal Actors. This is a 20 minute live show featuring trained animals from movies and TV shows performing various tricks and showcasing their talents. Next door is the final show aptly named Special Effects Show. This attraction takes guests through demonstrations of how movie special effects are created, including motion capture, chroma key and stop motion techniques. Unfortunately, it has yet to reopen since its closure in 2020, but it is expected to return at some point this year. We now move from the upper lot down to the lower lot. This can be accessed by a series of escalators located in Springfield and offers some amazing views of the back lot and other parts of the San Fernando Valley. 
During your descent, you'll probably notice the brand new Nintendo area that is currently under construction and is set to open in 2023. The first attraction you will come to is Jurassic World The Ride, which was previously Jurassic Park The Ride until the re-theme in 2019. This is a boat ride where you will be shown different dinosaur exhibits until some escaped dinosaurs cut the tour short as Owen, Claire and the Raptor Squad help you to escape the Indominus Rex. The ride uses a mixture of high-tech screens and animatronics to showcase the dinosaurs, including the newly added Indominus Rex animatronic in 2021. There are some drops and you will get wet on this attraction, so make sure you bring a raincoat or you could just dry off in the nice LA sunshine. The Jurassic World area also has a raptor encounter where you can meet everybody's favourite velociraptor, Blue, as well as the newly added friendly Triceratops and Baby Raptor. There is also a new outdoor interactive play area called Dino Play, where younger visitors can climb cargo nets, excavate fossils, explore a T-Rex skull, or simply ride some slides. Opposite the Jurassic World area is Revenge of the Mummy The Ride. This is an indoor roller coaster that opened in 2004 themed to the popular Mummy franchise. You will be transported to 1944 and into the tomb of Imhotep and despite warnings you load into the minecar style ride vehicles as you go further into the tomb. It features some amazing special effects and the roller coaster has the ability to move from scene to scene at an incredible pace. This is the most exciting coaster in the park and due to the dark setting, it can be quite scary at times, so it is perfect for fans of thrill rides. The final attraction in the lower lot is Transformers The Ride 3D. This exciting 3D dark ride will see you team up with Optimus Prime as you battle against the Decepticons in many exciting show scenes, featuring a variety of effects. Throughout the day, you can also meet Megatron, Bumblebee or Optimus Prime in a meet and greet in an area close to the ride building. If you haven't already booked your next Universal trip, then why not check out Undercover Tourist for some great deals on Universal and Disney hotels and tickets. And if you're watching from the UK, take a look at the amazing Universal and Disney packages that Virgin Holidays are offering right now. Both my affiliate links are in the description box below, so go check it out to see how much you could save on your next theme park vacation. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as I continue to make guides for all the Universal and Disney resorts around the world. Let me know your favorite attractions at Universal Studios Hollywood in a comment down below, and why not check out this attraction guide for Universal Studios Florida. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.